Hey, Aster here, and today I wanted to make a video that is very special to me because it has been a while since I've made a very personal video. I've been taking my break and I've taken my downtime. As you can see, I've been posting every day today because, well, I wanted to do the final grind set for 2022, but I did want to pace myself with one video that's scripted and another that's not. So today I'm going to be telling you about the harsh reality of being a content creator. Number one. Uniqueness and novelty isn't always a good thing. There's this thing when it comes to content creation that be yourself, be creative, something like that. But a lot of people also like to emphasize that be you and don't follow the trend, etc. When you look at their videos and they are very much following a trend. The reason that I say that uniqueness and novelty isn't always a good thing is because there is a reason that certain videos are boosted more than others, and that's because of algorithm. Algorithms are the things in YouTube that really, really, really dictate how your community is built and what kind of things people will watch you for. Uniqueness and novelty is nice and all, but you need to understand when there is too much uniqueness. Most of the time when a topic is too niche or a topic is too difficult, different, people usually don't click on that, therefore it's not boosted in the algorithm. So what I recommend you doing is focus on execution, but understand which trends and standards your community, interests, or your field are dabbling into. For example, in Genshin, you have a new character that's released, so you're expecting a lot of people making the same content as them, and the first instinct that you have is, oh, I don't want to make content of that character because they're new and everyone's just going to talk about it and it's just going to be lost in the sea. First of all, no, that's usually not the case. And second of all is focus on how you can reinvent the wheel. The wheel itself is good because it has proven itself to be good and effective, so why not just put your own twist on that? Focus on the execution, but understand that you have to also follow the trend in order to survive in this unfortunate economy. Number two is that your audience doesn't actually know what they want until you give it to them. You don't even know what you want as a content creator until you try it out for yourself. This was something that is very much true for me as somebody that likes to dabble in a variety of topics when it comes to Genshin impact. I was actually pretty lost when it came to topics that I wanted to do for this channel the first time that I made it. And the thing is, your audience can tell you in community posts, in discord, and etc. about what they want, but at the same time, you're going to notice that there will be days that your audience is very, very, very vocal about a certain topic and that when you actually do that thing, it flops. Like, it just algorithmically and analytically just does not work. And the thing is, that's normal. Like, that's normal. That's why I'm going to tell you right now that sometimes audience feedback isn't completely everything. Sometimes maybe there's just a vocal minority or maybe there's just some people that really want to see a certain thing, but you also have to gauge when is it worth it to listen to your your audience and when is it worth it to actually do what you want or when is it beneficial to do what the algorithm wants something like that it is those kinds of decision makings that you're going to have to do and you're going to have to sort out Number three is specialize your content. I've seen a lot of people that have made this mistake, especially people that are starting out. If you want to make a general content, if you want to make a general channel, that's perfectly fine. But we shouldn't treat YouTube completely as the social media platform that people go for you. People tend to leave immediately the channel that they thought was posting one thing started posting another. That's just a reality of life. For example, I tried to post Dungeons & Dragons content without making the actual effort to assimilate my audience into Dungeons and & Dragons and that video just flopped because I didn't have the foresight to go, wait, you people aren't here for Dungeons & Dragons. So specialize your content and then focus on that specialization to make that better. It's actually much easier if you just do it like that instead of a completely general general thing because one is you're going to lose yourself eventually in your content once you have too much of everything and two is that channels that are jack of all trades are usually bent on personality and most of the time when you're new you're not going to have that backbone at the moment of a community that's willing to sit through on anything that you do like anything that you post so start with specialization and then slowly transcend into a general topic of interest that you Number four is know how to do your taxes and what are the tax laws in your country. This was something that completely blindsided me when I was making content creation. I got monetized after a few months of content creation and I was so confused on 
why it needed my tax information so much so i'm just going to put that out there for anyone that wants to start content creation there is a lot of math that's going on in the background especially if you're the kind of people that have a lot of props purchases expenses you're going to need to understand the tax laws of your country and when to file them so please just a you know just a heads up if you're young if you want to go into content creation it's not all just putting on a camera and then talking in front of it and then expecting it to blow up there's actual logistics that's happening in the background and i cannot warn you enough to be careful of the logistics and the legal stuff that's happening in the background of any kind of content creation all right all right number six pay attention to your analytics pay attention to which videos do well and which videos don't so whenever you're a content creator, there's actually some times where you sit down and you just go, I want to make a video about blank. This could be a personal interest or this could just be something that's popular. Sometimes when a video is out of personal interest, for example, the La Senora video that I just made was out of pure interest entirely without actual trends. I already know that that video is not going to do well. I know that La Senora is a very, very old topic, and I know that not a lot of people are going to like that kind of topic, especially since it's not really a substantive video that's showing anything new. Like, it's not a theory video, it's just a critique. So I already know that some videos are not going to do well algorithmically and analytically. So pay attention to your analytics, because most of the time, the numbers are going to tell you what videos do your people like, and what videos do they want more from you. But don't focus on it too much all right i've seen too many people get too engrossed in their analytics don't do that you know have the have that balance it's nice to know the numbers but don't let the numbers consume you seven i want to say this authenticity is overrated quote unquote authenticity is overrated be careful what you share online i've seen a lot of people overshare online and realize that they didn't put the boundaries that they needed with their community for me personally, my boundaries was that I'm not really a personal kind of individual. Like, I will chat you every now and then and your DMs, I will be respectful towards you. But I also have my limitations on what social medias I go to. For example, I don't share my Discord or don't have a Discord server because Discord for me was a very personal platform that I used to interact with real-life friends. And I don't want to merge that with Aster as a persona. And I've been seeing a lot of people on my Twitter and a lot of people that have messaged me actually about content creations like how do you know when to draw the line and wouldn't they want me for my personality? This is a matter of your safety as a content creator and this is a matter of your interest as a content creator. If you want to overshare, go ahead. If you want to share all of your you know, personal information, you know, your pictures, your face, go right ahead. But know when to say no. Know when a person is going above your boundaries and set those boundaries as clear as you can. Like the clearer and faster that you set those boundaries to your audience, the easier it is to just say no to certain people and to moderate your own community. Number eight, there is absolutely nothing wrong with profiting off of your work. Creativity does not mean that you are not making profit. We are here in this age of creativity and content creation. And it is important for you to also understand that content creation is a business. Once you have that idea in your brain, and I've seen a lot of people become allergic to this idea that content creation, YouTube, social media is a business because a lot of people glorify art as this kind of untouchable thing by capitalistic society. But in reality, it is a business as much as anyone wants to tell you. And there's nothing wrong with profiting off of your work. Never be guilty of being proud of your merch or being proud of your commissions or thanking your subscribers if they donate to you. There's nothing wrong with that. You are a your hard work as a content creator should also be compensated monetarily and that is completely fine as long as you're not selling out to some brand that you personally don't like or personally cannot subscribe to or doing something illegal there is nothing wrong with profiting off of your content so go and you do you number nine know when to branch out but also know when to stay I have seen a lot of people say that, oh my gosh, you betrayed this fandom by going into another fandom, which is just a parting of life. As a content creator, it is up to you to know when to branch out and when to stay. Sometimes your content will drop. Sometimes the audience will drop and it happens. Most of the time, if a game or a trend is disappearing, Genshin, for example, is a really great example of this where trends come and go. 
people will stay, people will leave. And it is up to you if you want to also leave or if you want to stay. Some people stay because they like the content that they're making and there's really nothing wrong with the audience not liking them anymore. But some people should also know that if you're not having fun anymore or you think that your channel could be growing much more, you should know when to branch out. This is a very important thing. Let go of the past. Number 10. You being your own boss isn't always a good thing. You being your own boss means that you're going to need to put in your work and most of the time you're going to be working alone. Content creation and YouTube has this kind of glorified, I'm always happy in the camera kind of thing where, oh, it's just you passively waiting for views. No, it's a lot of writing, it's a lot of editing, it's a lot of voiceovers, it's a lot of moving around in front of a camera knowing what's a good shot. If you think that you cannot do that kind of grit, then you're going to need to pace yourself properly. So, what are my final words for content creation? If you want to be a content creator, know the grind. Respect the grind. Understand that it's not going to be easy. And it's definitely not going to immediately be gratifying. <laughs> I remember there would just be times where a video just works so well. And then sometimes it just doesn't. And you put in a lot of effort. And that's fine. It happens. Take the L. Move on. Post editing aster here. And I actually wanted to put in one final tip. 11. Don't respond to all the comments. I know that there's this kind of air around comment sections like, oh, you're supposed to involve into your community as much as you can, which is a healthy thing. However, know when your limitations is. I know too many people that have read through too many comments and they just left there with the worst kind of feeling. Know when to discern constructive criticism versus just actual douchebags on the internet. You will see the difference. Sometimes people are just unconvincible. Sometimes people are just wrong. Sometimes you're just wrong. You just gotta take the L and you just gotta say, sorry, I'm, I made a mistake. It's, that's fine. It happens. But don't overexert yourself when it comes to reading feedback. Feedback is a very, very dangerous thing, especially on social media, especially with complete strangers. Know when to accept feedback for yourself. Sometimes you just want to go, oh, well, this is how I wanted to make this video. Oh, that's my interpretation of it. And if you have other interpretations of it, it's fine, it's cool, whatever, just put it down in the comments. But I'm not inclined to agree to that. It happens. That's how you make fruitful discussions, and that's how you weed out the people that are just bullies or douchebags for no fucking reason. All right? Choose your battles wisely. And that's perfectly fine. But if you want to make content creation, my biggest, biggest tip is just do it. Turn on your camera, turn on your mic, you will improve. Go on a Google Sheet, start writing, and I wish you the best of luck. This is Aster, and thank you so much for chilling with me.